Our next guest, she is the uh, president of the Drama Desk, has been since 2010. She's also a contributor to the Broadway Channel, to theaterlife.com. She is also a writer for the Philadelphia Newspaper Group and the Middletown Times Herald Record. She is Isa Goldberg, and she's on the phone with us now. Isa, can you hear me? I sure can, Dave. Oh, thank great. you for that lovely introduction. Oh, well, thank you so much for being part of the Tony Show. I think this is your first time with us, and we're very, very happy to have you. So so let me ask you, I mean, we've been talking Tony, Tony, Tony. Tell us just a little bit about this year's Drama Desk. Well, this year's Drama Desk was really, uh, first, because we had a great show, which we're very proud of. Uh, we did the show at Town Hall. We were hosted by Brooke Shields and Brian Darcy James. We had some terrific entertainment, and the show really ran very, very well. Um, we were happy to give some special awards this year uh, to some wonderful productions. We uh, get granted our first ever Samuel Norkin Award, award that's given in the name of one of our former presidents, who was a well-known newspaper caricaturist. Um, but the award, which is an award for off-Broadway achievement, went to Stephen Karam's uh, Sons of the Prophet. Great. And then uh, we gave it our ensemble award this year to Sweet and Sad by Richard Nelson, which is a post-9-11 drama, our company award to the New Victory Theater, and an award for best performance to Mary Testa for Queen of the Mist, which is not a... Tony eligible musical. It was done off Broadway, but it was really one of the stirring productions of the season. I think a lot of people who uh, follow musical theater can certainly speak to the to, to the wonderful performance she gave. It was just an outstanding experience. And another performance award went to Nick Westray, who's the young actor who was in three shows this season, um, but has been making a name for himself quickly. Well, that's uh, by, by the way, Isa Goldberg is talking about the Drama Desk, which gives awards to both Broadway and Off-Broadway, and it doesn't, um, I don't think it, it separates the categories. Am, am I correct? I'm, I, I vote you are correct. Remember. Most of our, uh, we give a, a large number of awards every year, and in doing so, we evaluate, or I should say our nominating committee, which is a team of six people this past season, saw over 250 productions. And then they evaluate each of those productions in terms of 34-some categories that we have, everything from acting categories to directing, choreography, design. It's, it's an intense uh, coverage of New York theater, and most of that work truly is done by a handful of people who commit an enormous amount of time and energy to this. Well, and, and certainly Isa Goldberg does too, and we're very thankful that she can take a few minutes with us here in our Total Theater Tony show. Now, the, the Tony Broadway categories that I wanted to talk with Isa about are Best Book of a Musical and Best Original Score of a Musical. So let us begin with book. That, of course, is the libretto. That's the spoken word, non-song part of Broadway shows, and the uh, nominees are Alyssa Strada-Jones, Newsies, Nice Work If You Can Get It, and Once. Isa Goldberg, take it away. Okay. Well, I think really you're asking me about the Newsies and Once race and how that race is going to get played out, because they're really the two forerunners, I think, in this category. And in some ways, from my perspective, it is a foregone conclusion when you have a high-energy acrobatic kids from Newsies against the pining romantics in once, I think you'll find that Tony voters kicked in for the high-energy opportunity. Also, Newsies makes for a very successful touring show. It has all of the right elements to play as well in Peoria as it does in New York, if not better, actually. And for that reason, many of the Tony voters who are involved in producing uh, and supporting the, the touring part of the business mm -hmm. uh, will will have an influence, I think, in how that gets played out. Do you think that any uh, good shows, any good Broadway musicals were left out of this category? For, we're not talking about best musical. We're just talking about the book. Right. Well, I, I think things that were left out, 
uh, in this case were uh, tastefully left out. Uh, yeah. There was On a Clear Day, You Can See Forever, uh, and it seemed to go on in a listless, <laughs> plotless, forever way for most people. The rewriting that went into this fluffy piece from the 60s didn't seem to rescue it. One, in the end, wonders why he even went in that direction. Um, okay. There were um, snubs in the Best Original Score category. Uh, Spider-Man was left out, and Bono and the Edge uh, received not even a nod for their debut on Broadway. Do you think that's and right? I think that's understandable. Oh, you didn't like it. So you, you did not like the score for Spider-Man. I didn't really care for the score too much. I did think that um, in ter- terms of musical production, it has one of the greatest sets I've seen. George Seipen's set was it was miraculous. And also the costumes uh, by Iko Ishioka uh, were pretty fabulous. Well, let but it, it was a you know it's an eye pleasing production and but but seriously uh, I think Siphon's sets were very invigorating and very imaginative and inventive using a a lot of different media with a, in a very creative way. Actually, I also felt that way about Ghost, another musical that was very seriously, for for better reasons or not, was also overlooked in both musical category and score and book. Right. I mean, I thought the well, look of Ghost was sensational. Yeah, I, I thought the, the sets and the, it was the technology in Ghost that's, that's pretty fascinating and, and unique. I mean, you know, actually watching a ghost, the feeling like you're watching a ghost is not something I've ever seen, experienced before. But if we move back I to... I agree with you. If, if we move back to the original score um, contenders, we've got Bonnie and Clyde, Newsies, one Man, Two Governors, Peter and the Star Catcher. I, I was talking to another critic, and I said, it's a pretty weak field, and the one that looks like it's going to win, which would be Newsies, you know, it, it barely has enough new music in it that wasn't in the original 1992 Disney film Newsies that you wonder how it even qualified, because Once did not. O- almost all the songs in Once were in the movie, too. So do you think it's fair right. that Newsies is in well, there? I think there is a distinction there. I mean, yeah. Once is literally the same score on stage that it was in the movie. Newsies, I think they really added several new songs. So, I mean, if you're going to look at it percentage-wise, I would say that it might, some, I think it might have more than 50% new oh. music. Okay, that's fair. Uh, but I, I found that the style of Broadway anthems that Newsies, consists of were really not memorable. I, I thought that um, that was a very weak score. I agree with you. It's also an interesting category this year. I don't recall a year when Best Original Score had plays, music for plays, right. up for the Tony Award. This year, out of the four nominees, two of them are for music and plays. Those would be one man. In my two, yeah, personal sorry. opinion, yeah. the music in the plays was more successful than the music in the musicals, and especially the music for One Man Two Governors. Well, that's a lot of fun. If people don't know the show, it's a farce, and it's crank. And then in between, like the scenes while they're setting up, basically, while they have to change the set and clean up whatever got spilled or crashed or broken, a uh, little <laughs> skiffle pop group, you know, circa. Or pre early Beatles comes out and does some cute, clever, very bouncy rockabilly skipple type songs. Whether those are really, you know, a, a Broadway score, I, I don't know about that. I mean, what would you vote for in that category if you were a Tony voter? Well, you know, I think um, I would vote for One Man Two Governors, which is what I said. I, I realized that the, you know, music in a play doesn't move the story forward. But music in a play should be consistent with the style of the show. And in One Man, Two mm-hmm. Governors, I really thought that these, you know, four kind of scrappy guys stuffed into purple suits performed the kind of silliness and the idiocy that's, you know, what James Corden, Corden is, is doing throughout with his slapstick antics. And it works very, very well. I'm not a lover of slapstick. It's not the kind of thing I thought I'd be drawn to, but I was I was truly laughing and having a great time at the show. 
Cool. So now, for me, yeah. um, evoking the skiffle style of music, which is a throwback to the car driving British rock, but it's it's born of you know country and blues, so it's it's very favorable to the American ear. Some of the lyrics are pretty cute. There, there are also some clever songs in there. Um, they kind of go by in the show, and you're not really paying that much attention because your your head's still in the actual play. But uh, a couple right. of them are worth really digging into. Anyway, we, we have like just another minute or two left with Isa Goldberg, the president of the Drama Desk. And I've been asking everybody this as well, because even though we're celebrating the Tonys and Broadway on this Tony show, I want to give Off-Broadway a fair shake. And I'm wondering what your favorite one or two things Off-Broadway were this season. For a musical, it was Death Takes a Holiday, which... Oh. Um, I know it's a very sentimental kind of melodrama, but I thought it was beautifully done. I love the music. Uh, I thought the acting was very enjoyable. Uh, for me, that was a, a top-flight experience. And in terms of a, a drama, um, A Big Meal, or The Big Meal, which was at Playwrights Horizons, I thought it had one of the most unusual structures of the play. Uh, it follows a family's history through generations, in which the characters don't age, but they play themselves at different points in their lives and their offspring at different points in their lives. It's a very, very interesting interaction, and I I thought it was ingenious and and Hmm. quite challenging to watch. Well, we've had a very, very interesting and fun interaction with Isa Goldberg, president of the Drama Desk. You can also read her reviews in Philadelphia newspaper group, the Middletown Times Herald, and as well as theaterlife.com and the Broadway channel. So, Isa, I want to thank you so much, and I want to wish you a great time watching the Tonys tomorrow. I certainly will be, Dave, and I hope you have a great time, too. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye now. You, too. Bye-bye.